Hello, police emergency. I've noticed that my car windows have been smashed. Do you know of any reason why someone would do this on purpose? Do you feel like you've been targeted at all? No, but I'm the only um, uh, black person in the area, so I don't know if that's got anything to do with it. Right, OK. It's a Polish druggie. Polish slag, yeah. And they'll punch you. You've had banana skins pushed through your letterbox. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I do have to push through the door, mate. Hello, police emergency. All around the country, race hate crime is on the rise. It's terrorizing me and my family. And it's now drawing in our children. <laughs> we spent six months filming in one of our most multicultural regions. So she actually shouted from the window, pack your bassin. Not from this country. Get off the bus. Not from this country. At a time when they experienced their worst terror attack in recent memory. <laughs> and the fallout pushes race relations to breaking point. Hello, police emergency. The Muslims. Right, yeah. Muslims. We're going to kill these people. It's St George's Day in Manchester. <laughs> a public display of togetherness from a city that prides itself on multiculturalism. Manchester, it's hugely diverse. It's a fabulous place. There are over 200 languages spoken here in the city. It's the most culturally diverse city anywhere in Western Europe. The vast majority of people go about their life, feel pretty safe, very unlikely to be a victim of crime. But as we sit here today, you know, I would say, yeah, hate crime has always been there. You have to talk about that. You, you know, you can't hide behind the fact that it doesn't happen because it does. Hello, police emergency. Yeah, please, please. I've got someone in front of my house calling me a packy and everything. Great, please, I can help. You want me to shout him, Mr. Abak to me, he says Muslim. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. Trying to peddle hate, targeting innocent people, that is just not right. And I think it's really important that we take a stand against it. There are many different types of hate crime, but by far the most common factor is race. Police emergency. My son has been uh, bitten by a group of kids. Right, is your son somewhere safe now? He is safe, but I have to take him to access an emergency to get him checked out. Right, we'll jump in to get an ambulance. In North Manchester, response officers have received the report of a racial assault. The victim is a 13-year-old boy, Daniel. Right, um, do you want to tell me and my colleague all about it? I was playing football with my mates. There's this group of boys who start saying N-word to you and like, I tell him to stop it because it's kind of racist. So then his friends and all started saying, nigga, give me the ball. And I was like, but it's not your ball. So then these boys started punching me. Where were they beating? Was it just in the face? Just around here that it hurts me a bit. And do you think they do this because of your background? I, I think I did do it because I'm black, because... Have you ever experienced anything like this before? Yeah, yeah. You know, you're called names. People don't want to associate with you. People speak sometimes when you pass. Yeah, people do it. They can't stand a black person even walking in the street that they have to speak. What punishment would you like to see these boys get? Well, I don't want him to be punished or anything. Do you not think it's gone too far, though? You've been called racist names, you've been beat up and you're now in a hospital room yeah. and your, your mum's worried six that over there. If he reports it or if he takes it any further, he knows that they're going to come after him. That's what he said.
They didn't seem convinced that they wanted to press ahead with it. I would like to convince them otherwise, but... At the end of the day, it's the young lad who'd have to go to court and sit there. I'd hoped stuff like this was dying out, but... 12-year-old, 13-year-old... And they're still doing it, aren't they? All across Greater Manchester, the police monitor hate crimes as a barometer of social cohesion. In Oldham, racial tension is an ongoing concern. The town is a cauldron of different ethnicities with a history of race riots. A lot of Eastern European families live around here now. Sergeant Steve Prescott has spent 10 years policing the various beats. At the area I cover, it's predominantly white British, Asian and Eastern European families. These obviously do live side by side, however, there is friction. I believe there is racism, yeah. I think there is an underlying issue. The most important thing for us to do is obviously send out the key message to everybody that this isn't acceptable. I deal with things extremely quickly. Because if we don't, they tend to snowball these things. That's when problems start. So you can see the group here coming into play. Oldham is seeing an increase in incidents of racial hatred by young offenders. This is um, the attack on the taxi drivers. A particular taxi driver drives up the street now. Uh, and as he, as he comes into view, this particular individual here spits at his car. Kicks the car window and he's shouting verbal abuse, racist abuse at him. And he's trying to go about his, you know, his day, trying to earn a living. Uh, well, he's getting taunted by this group. They're young people. Um, and then, I'm not sure whether you're aware, but yesterday there was a group of, of youths and they have racially abused uh, two uh, Asian women yeah. um, and they've thrown eggs at them. Yeah. Um, the victim obviously is feeling quite vulnerable um, and they're not willing to support the prosecution. There's a lot of verbal abuse directed at um, an Eastern European family by a group of white youths who throw uh, cans and bricks. The more crime they do, the more confident they get because they're not getting caught. The more you do, the more incidences, you know, the more you racially abuse people, the more you think you're going to get away with it because there's, there's been no outcome. You've not been detained, you've not been arrested, you've, nothing's happened to you, your way of life's not changed, so just continue in that manner, don't you? Young white males behaving in some horrific manner. Where's that, that belief? Where's that come from? Deprivation. Might be lack of education because people don't finish school. Low income families. It's not ideal, is it? Hate crime is deeply uncomfortable. It's, it's, I think, in part the product of, a, of an unfair and an unequal society um, where people don't feel that they have a stake and that they are being fairly treated. Nothing excuses it, but of course it doesn't. But I think at least you can understand how the conditions have been set whereby somebody 
would say uh, uh, some of those things. Nothing excuses it. Committing violence against anybody is inexcusable. It goes against the values of our country. But in a society that has become resentful, unequal, the conditions are there, aren't they? You know, just because people live in the same community doesn't mean they'll get on. And they don't. For example, one incident could literally change the dynamics of the entire community. They're really difficult societal issues. You know, there could be something really significant happens that can be really divisive and can drive people against each other. Given the underlying intentions, all it would take is one major incident. And I think you'd see hate, crime, sort of hate issues go through the roof. We're in Manchester, and there's just been a terror attack at an Ariana Grande concert in the city centre. Islamic State are claiming responsibility for this attack here in Manchester, which has left people dead and injured, many of them teenagers, children, my thoughts are very much with those that have been injured and lost their lives and their loved ones at this terrible time. We are doing all that we can to support them. This is clearly a very concerning time for everyone. A few hours after the bombing, a figure is seen approaching a mosque in Oldham. Place. It's a fire in uh, the entrance of the mosque. At it Old, is, um, I've got it as the Islamic Centre. Yeah. Nice. Deliberate ignition at this moment. Yeah, deliberate ignition. Oh, I take it you're very busy now. It's a uh, tragic, isn't it, really? It's a shocking town. I know, you know, we're hearing these things, but when it's so Manchester as a city and its people have been knocked sideways. Among those who lost their lives, 19-year-old Georgina Callender, an avid fan of Ariana Grande, and 28-year-old John Atkinson. 17-year-old Chloe Rutherford and her boyfriend Liam Curry, who was 19, were said to be inseparable. And 8-year-old Safi Roussos. She'd been so excited about being at her first pop concert. When you have such an atrocity that can be really divisive and can drive people against each other, it's important that we say we won't let them cause that tension to ripple out into our communities. The mosque that was set on fire in Oldham is on Steve's beat. Every looks for someone to blame, People have no understanding regards to who's involved or what's going on. It's literally two out two equals eight that's playing the Muslim community. People believe that they're responsible. Yeah, you can see it. That's where the guy came and burned that door. Yes, that's the lady's entrance. He, he came by the bicycle. He ran away. We've been here more than 20 years. 
and never have happened like this. And this, this, this is the first time. And it's really panic and sad for everybody. In the world, you have a good and bad people. So you don't have to be... When you are scared, then you can't live with this community. To keep peace, you know, that's important. Are you worried about more attacks? <laughs> you never know. And they've not just gone to set fires to the door, have they? They've gone to literally burn the place down. That in itself just highlights how volatile it is. Are we literally firefighting? Get but Tony obviously this is a crisis moment. Time. There's been an attack some, apparently in Oldham. Uh, for, yeah, we, we're still um, looking for confirmation. It looks like somebody set fire in yeah. the door. Well, it's pretty that. obvious that if, if someone is shouting out words of Islamic content and then commit an act of terror and atrocity, it will inevitably result in, in a backlash. It's, that's obvious. Irfan is the imam of the largest mosque in Manchester. We have to, have to, have to differentiate and distinguish between the faith of Islam and the hate-filled Islamist extremist ideology. And this is why I do the media. What's your name again, sir? Fergal Keen. Fergal Keen, yes, I've heard you and seen you. How would you describe the perpetrator of this attack? Violent terrorists, end of. Don't be suspicious, you know, our, our local communities are full and thriving. Do you worry, though, that there may be a backlash against Muslims, particularly in Manchester, after what happened. I, I, you know what, I don't, think, I don't think we will allow that to happen in Manchester. I think we're strong, we are proud, we are a resilient community, we are um, very understanding of each other. Oh dear, oh dear. What a load of rubbish. The man that you was at speaking earlier on, yes, he preaches love in front of an open audience. It's what goes on behind closed doors. I don't give a damn what the, the Muslims say in this country. My workmates, my family, the people I talk to, we've had enough. Not everyone agrees with Irfan's message. The day after the attack, former leader of the EDL, Tommy Robinson, posts this handheld video on the internet. I've come to Manchester after the terrorist attack last night. They are, they are enemy combatants in these houses. In these houses are enemy combatants who want to kill you, maim you and destroy you. And it's happening because the Quran in over a hundred verses incites murder and war against us. That's the reality, that's the truth. So I hope that people don't think like this. Innocent Muslims are not to blame for this in any way, shape or form. I need to redress the balance. Redress the balance, redress the balance. Cohesion standing together, it can really happen. The people of Manchester will remember the victims forever and we will defy the terrorists by all our diverse communities, working together cohesively and with mutual respect. calling from one of your hate and crime reporting centres in Bury. I have a victim here who want to report an incident. She was attacked by a group of teenagers and she was hit and badly bruised. They called her back to your country. Ten miles from the vigil in Bury, a Muslim woman and her daughter have been attacked. I was like, stop it, why are you doing this? Stop hitting my mum and all that. I don't know why they did it. Because maybe we're different from them. It's probably why they did it. Don't make changes in your life. You want to go for a walk, you go for a walk. Whatever time you want to go for a walk, it's, you don't need to worry about that. You're not safe. OK? Carry on. Don't stop. All right, thank you so much. So this 
is the place where we make you at home. We make you feel welcome. We make summer happen. We can't seem to help it with a smile on our face. Mancunians forever. Because this is the place in our hearts, in our homes. Because this is the place in our hearts. Place emergency. Yeah. Police, please. Seven white kids are trying to kill my son. It's my son. Okay, Calm I'll down. Calm down. Calm down. I'm here. They're going to kill my son. The bombing just happened about a few days before. I was driving my car, going towards my mum's house. There was two guys in the 20s, and they've shouted something while my window was down. And they've gone, your back wheel on your car's low, mate. So I've gone, oh, thank you very much. Stopped my car, left my car running as well. Got out of my car and I've gone towards my back wheel and they're right near by my side. And they've gone, while they're right by my side, they've gone with a terrorist bomber and just tried to smash a glass bottle over my face. I've ended up putting this my, my right hand in the way and it all just splattered all over my hand, a glass bottle. And next minute I've just seen glass all in my hand and blood everywhere and I could just look at them running. I've just ended up collapsing on the floor. I was lucky that my daughter wasn't in the car with me. Because normally I'm with my daughter or my wife in the car. Could have been them. A lot of people are getting called terrorists. This. They must know, obviously, deep down, he's not a terrorist. He's a Muslim. Let's just attack him. It's just making you think what's going on. Should we be in this country? Or should we get out of this country? But then, I was born here and bred here, and there's nowhere else to be. I'd prefer to be in this country, but then these attacks just want you to get out of this country for your own safety. Because you don't want someone coming through your door one day and just attacking you just for being a Muslim. Or while you're driving, or while you're in a shopping center or anything. So it's not nice, it's just scary. In the days following the Manchester bombing, there's been a wave of attacks on innocent Muslims. Sadly, we've seen an increase in reports of hate crime uh, from 28 on Monday, which is our normal average for a day, through to 56 uh, on Wednesday. We're continuing to monitor the situation and support our communities. I wanted to give you these posters. It's all about hate crime and we just want you to all be aware of it, that if you ever are subject to it, to give, you know, let the police know about it, no matter how minor or... Yeah, really if you need any information any time, Oh, thank just you, get yeah. Into yeah. Just putting them up in all the mosques. Yeah, 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 that's fine. This is the most sensitive time in the Muslim calendar. All right, I've got to take my shoes off. The holy month of Ramadan. And community officers are touring the mosques on a daily basis to offer reassurance. Because that's what we're here for. I'm just trying to get people, to tell people to report, report anything. Anybody say <laughs> In Oldham, the community has rallied around the mosque that was set on fire. But despite these public displays of togetherness, more and more victims are coming forward. Hi, sir, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks, sir. Oh, you all right? Can I just go and find, obviously, like, what, what sort of happened? Well, it was around half past 11. I'd just opened, and, and this, this chap comes over. He asks for, for free food. Yeah. Um, I have given him free food in the past, but, I've, you know, I've, I've just opened up, and, and at my refusal, he, he really got nasty and, and said, you packy bastard, you know, I'm only asking for food. And then he says, I know where you work and I know your car. That really, you know, scared me. When, when you think about the bigger picture, it's idiots like this, you know, who really make it worse. Yeah. When he said to you, packy bastard, I hate saying that word, um, how did you feel? 
Well, it makes you feel worthless. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, something like that, you know, sends you in shock and it makes you feel worthless. Yeah. The sum total of uh, my uh, being is in, in his eyes and he's, you know, in, 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 in the rest of slurs that he, he throws at me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm very proud of who I am. Uh, I contribute in many ways. Yeah. Um, my For generations, First and Second World War, between the war, we have contributed uh, to, to the society. And, and, and something like that makes it... Uh, Usually I'm not uh, very thin-skinned, but something like that really hurts you. Yeah. And, and it has an impact. Terrorism wants a reaction from people on the other side, and that in turn creates another reaction. That's what it's designed to do. It's designed to create a cycle of violence. But actually, the, the kind of predominant feeling that has come through is People are not prepared to let this place be dragged down into that mire. So much grief and pain in so many hearts. But look at what has happened here this evening. There are no divisions here tonight. We are a great Mancunian city. I am a man of hope, and we hope that really this is the end of the turmoil here in our beautiful city and we can continue to keep loving each other. It's only love that will unite us, it's hatred that will cause our, our divisions and call our loss. We are Manchester. It's about time somebody had the ball to stand up for these people. You either deport them or you intern them. Listen, as a bloke just looked uh, like smashed like a takeaway window and just gone in because he said, quote, the package. Hello, police emergency. This man is being arrested for attacking Muslims in the park. Officer, you're arrest on suspicion of racial aggravated assault. You what? You have to say anything. You what? You don't mention when questioned. But you what? All Muslims. Relax. Them, them, uh, well, tons of people got killed in the Well, they didn't kill him, did they? Yeah, remember? You, Muslims. What kind of comments has she been making? Regarding Muslims, she's going to bomb the restaurant. Muslim. Hey, clever cunt. I'm going to kill these people. You lying scum. Always preaching peace after the damage is done clear off back to where you were spawned. <laughs> Interesting. Those on the far right responding and trying to peddle that hate, they're doing what, what, what the terrorists wanted them to do, which is create this kind of clash of, of, of people and of, of, of cultures. That's what they want. Some breaking news to bring you now. Police are attending an incident at London Bridge in central London. Yes, yes. On the 3rd of June, the stakes are raised again. There's another terror attack, this time in central London. What was he wearing? Was he wearing a mask? No, idea. no, no mask. He looked like I, I, I hate it because. Go on. I, you know, Tell you. I, don't, I don't. I know the thing with yeah, Muslims yeah. and terrorism. Yeah. He looked like some terrorist. Two days later, Tommy Robinson puts out a direct appeal to camera on social media, advertising an event in Manchester called the UK Against Hate. I'm organising a march through Manchester on Sunday. I've had 2,000 messages in the last couple of days from people saying they want to do something, they want to be involved, they want to fight back. Join us, OK? Britain's ready for it. The people are ready for it.
Robinson's event takes place on the 11th of June. He wants it to be peaceful, but his 3,000 followers are met by a counter-protest and tensions are rising on both sides. Robinson is running, is running this. I think it's building. They've lost the containment on Star Street in London. In the aftermath of the attack, there was that need for a sense of calmness. People were scared. But when you've got the extremes on both sides, it's not a reasoned debate. What it spills out into is violence. The numbers were worrying. It was a very clever marketing tool PR exercise that he's, he did, United Against Hate. In the last few months, we've seen three terror attacks in our country. If these guys are genuine about coming together against hate, then yeah, I'm the first to be standing with them and, sp and saying we need to get rid of these hate-filled, you know, terrorists and extremists. But don't pretend. Don't be coming to our city and saying you're going to be standing against hatred and then breed hatred yourselves. What, what is that? That's hypocrisy. We'll just go into this room here. If you just take a seat over there. Um, yesterday morning, I was on the bus. A guy came and sat next to me. And he was like staring at me for like 10 seconds. So I told him, can I help you with anything? And then he said, yeah. And then he told me, are you, are you related to the three guys from London? So I said, no, I'm not related to any of them. Okay. He was like swearing and like, he was like kicking me. Kicking you? Yeah. Where was he kicking you? Like on my leg. He was grabbing hold of my hand. He said that I know you're a terrorist. I told him that let go of me, otherwise I'm going to go to the police. And he did. He got off the bus? Yeah. Have you used public transport since? I know. Is that because of that? Oh, okay. It made me feel scared. Like, I don't want to go out alone. And I feel like someone will always be there to, like, say things about me and about my religion and about myself. I'm nervous. I'm afraid. OK. Of everybody or...? Like, certain people. OK. Anyone in particular? Non-Muslim people. So anyone who's not a Muslim, yeah. now you're, you're scared of, OK. Do you think anything will help that, anything will make that pass, or do you think that's something that will stick with you now? Something that will stick with me. That's really sad, isn't it, that that, that one kind of incident is, is going to have such a long-lasting yeah. kind of effect on you? So this is where most of the assaults have been happening. It's happening regularly around here. So just as some background, yesterday there has been a racially aggravated assault on a young boy. He has heard a voice shout, dirty. One of your mates has got assaulted. Has he been injured badly? Yeah, yeah. his eye was like... Oh, he's been stamped on. Get him on the floor and then kick him thump his head, stamp on his head. It's all around his head. This has happened to him, it's happened to someone else. We need to make sure that those people are caught. In North Manchester, the police have launched an operation after a series of racial attacks on children in the weeks following the arena bombing. The latest victim is a 13-year-old Muslim boy. 
Have the offender's been named on social media? Yes. Right. We have identified a group of about eight or nine children who are responsible for these offences. The suspects are all 12 years old. Have you got a warrant to walk in the door? Come in, 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 come come in, 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 come Right, take a seat up there, mate. Seat up Quarter to one. And you've been arrested for a racially aggravated assault. Do you understand what that means? What do you think that means? Mm -hmm. Do you know what a racial assault is? No comment. This boy was called racial words, so he was at the time of the incident. Have you got anything to say about that? No comment. But you're laughing? No comment. So you think that's funny? <laughs> no comment. He was pushed to the floor and he was punched and he was kicked by five offenders. He's got serious injuries to his head, in his face, in his eyes, in his body. No comment. Are you racist? No comment. You know what racist means? No comment. The answer is getting back to a society that offers hope and purpose to all young people at the end of school, that they are going somewhere, that there's something there for them. And somewhere along the way, we lost that. You're standing outside my house now. Okay, you just threat me and I'm gonna kill me, gonna shoot me, I'm a black horn. Hello, police emergency. Oh, you black cunt, come on. Why do you come think on. you're hiding in the floor? Yeah, you black little cunt, I'm gonna smash you! On the 19th of June, there is another terror attack. But this one is different. The terrorist is white, and Muslims are the target. London police say one man was pronounced dead they have taken eight patients to hospital. This man drove his van at high speed into a crowd of worshippers. But in the heat of the moment, the Imam comes to his rescue. By God's grace, we managed to surround him and to uh, protect him from any harm. Uh, we, stopped, uh, we stopped all forms of attack and abuse towards him that were coming from every angle. All life is sacred. Hero of the mosque. Yes. Whenever are you going to get an imam on the page one of the sun, huh? Tell you what, I've got to rate that guy. I thought I was cool. Yeah. <laughs> I look at that one here, that's really good. He's actually kind of trying to calm him down and give him some love. Uh, you know, I went uh, that day, this is the first day ever that I went, went out and bought some tabloid newspapers. And I'm so glad. There are no reprisals by the Muslim community after this attack. Despite this moment of tragedy, that we still have the respect and love of the Ah, yeah, all right. Oh, thanks for having us. It was amazing. Thank you. Thanks for the invite. To come along. No, no, thanks for having us. The attack on the mosque reinforced the community. It brought the community closer together, rather than it sending things the other way. It was the opposite side, you know. 
it's easy to report on the negative stuff. When do you ever see a good news story? You don't really you know when the mosque do a great deal of work. I think they're very welcoming. They're just nice folk. Generally, we are so fortunate in, in Britain to live in a in a country that is predominantly safe, it is predominantly tolerant of difference. We won't let them defeat us. Ramadan has come to an end. In Manchester Central Mosque, Irfan is giving his Eid address. So my final message to all of you on this blessed and joyous day, keep rejoicing, keep happy, keep showering that love, that respect, that dignity, that honor that our faith has given us. Never bow down to fear. Never be shameful of being Muslims. Hold your heads up high. And those that point towards us with hatred, give them nothing but love back. And we will receive the same love and honor back. Hello, police emergency. 